As we celebrate the end of 2020, finally, we should also take some time to celebrate the amazing music that came out this year, which was a lot considering all the circumstances that happened in this awful year. This video takes a look at the top 10 best albums of 2020. 2020 might have been a rough year for everyone, but music was one saving grace in 2020, Year of Our Destruction. If you were interested in what I thought was the worst of 2020, you can check out the link to that in the YouTube card and video description. But for this video, we are talking about what I feel was the best. Rules for the list. Number one, the album has to be somewhere in rock, metal, alternative, punk, indie, industrial, etc. Rule number two, no live albums, cover albums, parody albums, or EPs. This helps to narrow the playing field down a little bit. Number three, I nor anyone else has heard every album that came out this year. So if there's an album that you think is the best of 2020, leave a comment and let everyone know. And before we get to the list proper, here are some quick honorable mentions. Bring Me the Horizon Post-Human Survival Horror. This was a fantastic return to form from the former, now once again, metalcore giants. The exceptional guest appearances, the killer songs, and this being the first in a series of EPs has me extremely excited to hear what's next from Bring Me the Horizon. This is how a band makes a big comeback and shocks the system and I am on board to see what happens next. Poppy, I disagree. Poppy rampaged into the metal scene with pop-infused cuteness, and as wild as some of the songs on I Disagree are, I can't help but respect how it all played out. Poppy has become a brand as well as a musician and persona, and songs like Concrete and Blood Money prove that she has some tricks up her sleeve that cannot be matched. She's more than a sweet girl, she's a spectacle, and so is this album. Creeper, Sex, Death, and the Infinite Void. The comeback album for a band many feared were done, and this album definitely doubled down on storytelling, character Character's camp, and it worked. The singles and some of the highlight songs really grew on me over time, and to everyone who still hasn't given Creeper a chance, this is a group that deserves much more attention. And finally, Unleash the Archers, Abyss. Power metal with a bit of finesse and class behind it while trying to make a great story in the music. The singing is both parts beautiful and shocking while some amazing instrument work is featured, including a fantastic orchestral section. The guitar work is wild, songs are memorable, and Unleash the Archers continue to improve in big ways with each album. That being said, Said, thank you for watching and supporting the channel this year. You know how these videos work. Let's get to the best of 2020. Number 10. Making an album out of a progressive story that sounds like a musical is not easy in rock, let alone electronic rock. Enter Shikari don't really play by specific rules, and they really stepped out of their comfort zone with nothing is true and everything is possible. Filled with unique orchestral and acoustic segments along with hard rock, this is an album celebrating what's possible when trying to push yourself. There are some moments where everything breaks down and becomes a digitized, amorphous sounding blob of insanity, but it only adds to the entire album at the right times. And while slightly chaotic at moments, songs Songs like Satellites and The Dreamer's Hotel have you coming back instantly after hearing them. Undeniable earworms on this album. This was an album that grew on me through 2020, and as the summer went on, I found myself really going back into it because you really do miss a lot on the first few listens with so much going on. It's a hard sell for people who aren't familiar with the band's style, and admittedly, a hard jumping on point for Enter Shikari, but it's worth it. I mean, listen to the song Satellites, one of my favorite songs of the year. Jeez, that'll hook you alone. Enter Shikari set out to make something bold and praise how things are possible. They did that while showing they have a massive, diverse range of talents through music writing. Part symphony, part electronica, all impressive. Number 9. I can openly admit Avatar is not for everyone, but Hunter Gatherer was the album that rekindled my fascination for these crazy Swedes. Hunter Gatherer was a big step up from their previous, more lighthearted album, Avatar Country, and it reinforces my opinion that when the band really focuses on a strong narrative and gets serious, they can make something engaging. Oddly enough, Colossus, the big single from Hunter Gatherer, is one of my least played. There is variety in speed and tone on this album that many won't give credit because they see Crazy Clown Man and write it off. Like I said, I get Avatar's not for everyone, but they 
definitely deserve more of a chance than they've been given the United States outside of Sirius XM airplay. Johannes's clean singing has improved. The production on the music has gotten better over the years. This feels like solid continued development and Hunter Gatherer might be the Avatar's most accessible album to date. The deep cuts are what made me keep coming back to this one, and it's worth hearing if just to get a sense of what Avatar is capable of. Songs like A Secret Door, Scream Until You Wake, and Where All But Force Have Failed are why I like Avatar, and even in the dark moments in a song like Child, I can't help but appreciate what they've made here, even with a crazy screaming clown. Number eight. Time to get abducted. Pussifer's surprise return in the first half of 2020 was a welcome note in a year filled with bad news. And in October, when we received the fourth studio album from Maynard, Karina, and Matt, it was clear that was exactly the type of art rock hypnotic distraction we were craving. Songs like Apocalyptical and The Underwhelming are what drive an alien investigation story like this. And while the track times run long, the electronic effects and digital production is stellar, with both Maynard and Karina sounding amazing together on every track. What I also love about Existential Reckoning is while Pussifer's earlier works were intentionally ridiculous, I mean, come on, it's Maynard, in 2020 it felt like the group wanted to make a truly involved album and they definitely exceeded with that. Existential Reckoning is worth getting lost in. You'll find moments with different feelings and speeds that make something mesmerizing and I still cannot say enough about the vocal pairing of Karina and Maynard. If you want something a bit out there, give Pussifer a shot because it's as good as it is weird. And that's saying a lot. If you're a fan of Maynard James Keenan, if you're a fan of creative electronic art rock, if you're a fan of Aliens, Existential Reckoning is worth checking out. Number seven. 2020 is when Code Orange went from angry to furious. They took the industrial and hardcore elements they were known for and amplified those styles specifically, and what we got was underneath. This is a band who is continuing to prove that they will not sit back and keep their mouths shut or rest on their laurels of previous success. What they care about is kicking down the door and screaming right in your face. The title track is the exclamation point, but if you give this album a chance and really work through the full frontal assault, you get so much more out of an album like this. There are even songs like Autumn and Carbine and Sulphur Surroundings which lighten off the gas pedal just a touch before going back to the hardcore and industrial fusion. It's vicious and at times feral, but never to the point of becoming a wall of sound just for the sake of volume. Code Orange have earned the praise they've gained over the years, and Underneath is proof. I've heard many arguments about how Underneath isn't as strong as forever from a few years ago, but in my mind, that does not make this album weak. The riffs and synth notes all contribute to great performances, and every vocalist in this band is solid. Code Orange is still the real deal, and I still think they are not done showing us all what the group is capable of. Underneath is definitely one of the best heavy albums of the year, combining many genres into one unique, biting, venom-filled monster. Code Orange is too deep in to fail. Number six. Over 20 years into an amazing career and Fiona Apple is still as sharp as ever. It almost feels like between album cycles Fiona Apple just disappears for years at a time, but when she returns she makes a big statement. Fetch the Bolt Cutters is that unique album reminding me of mid-90s true alternative music that wasn't confined to traditional rock and Apple still excels with it. While it was Shamika that got attention from the album, there is much more on Fetch the Bolt Cutters worth hearing. The piano and drums behind much of the album is great, but it's truly Fiona's writing and Low on every song that relays to the listener. There is a simple sense of inspiration and relatable phrases that make a 51 minute album fly by extremely fast. A style like Fiona Apple's is becoming a sound of the past, with the term alternative meaning something wildly different than it did 25 years ago. This is unbridled creativity with a sense of I will make music however I want and however I feel suits me. No trends chased, no format followed, and it all comes together because of that. Many years after the days of criminal flooding MTV and radio, it still feels like Fiona Apple is bearing it all for the world and holding nothing back. And every time she creates something, she proves she still has potential. Jamaica said I had potential. Number five. You're a catastrophe. 
A few years ago, I jumped back onto the Trivium bandwagon with the Sin in the Sentence, and in 2020, I'm glad I did, because this year's entry, What the Dead Men Say, also blew me away in terms of a band refusing to be pigeonholed as a standard metal band. This album is proof they want to make stronger music with a narrative instead of going chugga chugga like many other bands are satisfied with. Back in the spring of this year, Matt Hafey said that they wanted to combine elements of death metal, thrash, hardcore, metalcore, all the sounds they love. In that, they also made what the dead men say into a story. That is a gargantuan task to make all of that fit seamlessly and deliver on something, but in that, they made giant hook filled songs like Catastrophist and Among the Shadows and the Stones. It's great. It's not an overly long album, but Trivium jam pack a lot of material, including some exceptional guitar work, bass, drumming. Some of the instrumental parts are a main selling point. A few years ago when Trivium started pushing themselves again to not fall into a rut, it paid in big dividends, and we are still getting that now. Thank God there are bands that refuse to keep status quo for an entire career. What the Dead Men Say, Twitch, Playing with Jared Dines, Trivium have had a big 2020 in spite of everything that happened. Here's hoping that continues next year. Number 4. Protest the Hero already had a high standard of quality, and even after some physical trouble with voice issues, this band still gave something heavy while being technically impressive. Palimpsest proves a band like Protest the Hero can push through a unique situation and then give something killer. Progressive metal with a touch of mathcore that doesn't go overboard like many other metalcore bands just trying to show off along with a hint of punk rock. There are even some string sections that really bring things up a notch, and this is by far one of the best heavy albums of any band in 2020. Palimpsest is an amazing example of bonkers speed changes and 10 instruments all playing at once done right. You don't feel it's chaotic for the sake of sounding impressive, but rather they add so much because the music warrants that at times. One listen to The Canary will give you an adrenaline rush and make you feel like you need to sit down all at the same time. Sometimes the best albums in music are the ones you just can't can't describe well in a short paragraph, and Protest the Hero's latest is an example of that. It's wild, motivating, captivating, intense, and many other adjectives that others have used over the past few months to accurately describe Palimpsest. Whether it's progressive or math rock or just something totally different, this album has what you need. That wild bull on the album cover? That's also Protest the Hero charging through anyone that'll listen, and this album will leave a mark. Number three. There was a lot of promotion for UK's Loathe before this album dropped, and I admit I was fairly unfamiliar with the music outside of the name. I let it in and It Took Everything is that type of album that made me lose my mind and wish I had listened to Loathe sooner. Seriously, I wish I had my ear to the ground a little bit earlier on these guys because they have something. Loathe have such a wild contrast between gorgeous, serene melody and atmospheric music, all the way to piercing, shrieking animosity. And it's all fluid. You don't feel like one style belongs while the other doesn't. When you hear tracks like Two Way Mirror and Gord, you understand how both are wildly different from each other, but definitely belong on the album and represent an amazing band. 2020 obviously halted every band in their tracks too, and it's a shame because I feel that Loathe really could have made a huge name touring and promoting an album like this on the road. Loathe is one of the bands that I hope is able to push through and dominate 2021 because this is an album that would normally be a massive breakout for any artist. It's a roller coaster of sound and emotions with highs and lows but it all feels like a smooth ride and a blast to run over and over again. I let Loathe in and they gave me something great. These are the types of bands to keep an eye on and support. A world of promise and potential and diverse enough to win you over several different ways. Nothing to loathe about that. Number two. There was a massive amount of hype and anticipation for Deftones' first new album in years. We knew before quarantine that the band were planning on keeping their word and releasing this year without holding it back. Then we got the title track for Ohms. Then we got the song Genesis. 
Then the full album arrived, and listeners were given another reason to love Deftones. Ohms is sonically different from the past few albums Koino Yokin and Gore. While bringing back Terry Tate, they brought back astounding production levels. Along with that, Deftones made music that seamlessly connected metal and shoegaze and so much more that many bands have trouble even working individually. Chino's voice is as smooth as ever in the quieter moments, and some of the guitar riffs from Carpenter are fantastic. Each song really feels like a combination of many elements, and they make each one transition perfectly into each other while adding the right amount of hooks along the way and without taking you out of trance while listening. I went into Ohms wanting something refreshing and different from previous Deftones albums and I do feel I got just enough of that on top of some amazing songs. This is a complete album and I feel every song belongs on here. I understand Deftones aren't everyone's thing. This album definitely was for me and I'm not the only one who feels the album hit the mark. Ohms delivered for many Deftones fans, rock fans, metal fans, any music fans in general over a year where we needed a positive distraction. It wasn't all an illusion. Deftones came through. Before we get to the best album of 2020, please hit the like button below if you've been enjoying this video so far. It helps a ton to get this video pushed to new viewers on YouTube, and it'll help the discussion on all these albums be heard by non subscribers. Thank you. All right, what stood out best in 2020? Number one. Right before the pandemic started, Spanish Love Songs released their third studio album, Brave Faces, Everyone. In February, it hit hard and people were hyping it up. I don't think any of us would have expected this album to become even better as time went on, especially in a tragic year like 2020. I can't stress enough that Brave Faces, Everyone is the defining anthem of 2020 from front to back. This album is the best example of emo, pop punk, and true gritty alternative from a past generation all rolled into one, featuring some of the most well-written hooks and lyrics I've heard in years. Brave Faces Everyone is a motto for a year like this, but it really defines how many of us feel. Life is rough. Things are not what we thought they should have been, and we keep feeling like we are failing at something. Things can be bad, but we have to roll out of bed, put on a brave face, and keep trying. That is what Spanish love songs express perfectly through this album. Not only is this one of the best beginning to end albums I've heard all year, but every second feels important and contributes, and they nail it. The guitars, the rolling bass, the keys, Dylan Slocum's vocals, everything is just fantastic. The opening line, on any given day, I'm a six of 10, is the perfect amount of self-deprecation, but also self-realization in a bad situation. Again, this entire album has the slightest amount of optimism at the end of everything, even when being extremely bleak. There is some debate that if you are already in a bad state of mind, music like this could make you feel worse, but in an odd sense, it can give you a sense of clarity. This music is so infectious that everything just sinks in and stays with you, and that slight optimism kick carries with it. As much great music has come out in 2020, I feel like this album is still head and shoulders above everything else. Great Faces Everyone is still as striking and memorable as it was the first time I heard it. Hearing the songs live holds up as well, and I can fortunately say that as the band was able to tour briefly in the first part of 2020. I stand by that Spanish love songs are now that criminally underrated band that's earning lifelong fans every time someone hears a song from them. Maybe you're into death metal, maybe you're into electronic indie rock. Whatever you're into, you should give Spanish love songs a chance. Their music will sink deep into your conscious and never let go. We all made it through 2020, let's all move on and leave this year in the past. Brave faces everyone. And that was a look at the top 10 best albums of 2020. What was your favorite album this year? Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Brandon Berenfeld, Chris Doman, McKenna White, and Dom Smith. You can have a say in upcoming videos and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Please click on the link in the video description for more info. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified on upcoming videos. You can check out my college photography on Instagram, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.